When developing games, collisions are one of the fundamental aspects you'll probably want to understand relatively early. This generally means that two objects in our game world have attempted to occupy the same space. When this occurs, we tend to fire an event which the game will then react to as necessary. Examples of this could be when an enemy touches a player's oncoming bullet, where you'd more than likely want it to be destroyed, or when a player attempts to walk through a wall, and we probably want to prevent them from doing so. Detecting when two objects have collided will typically depend on their shapes and sizes, which can come in many forms. Whereas in the last video we looked at rectangular collisions, which are the most basic and quickest form of collision, in today's video we'll look to understand circular collisions and how you can implement them in your own games. These type of collisions can be useful for round based objects, such as balls or rounded edges on walls for example. If you're new to my channel, my name's Anthony and welcome to my corner of the web, where I like to build retro games within the browser using the latest technologies. To demonstrate circle collision, we'll expectantly need two circles to work with. So let's first start by creating two objects and call them circle A and circle B. As game worlds work on a coordinate system, we'll next define their X and Y values, presenting their position in 2D space. We'll also give them a radius value to present their size. To continue, let's now set up the code so that we can test our circular collisions. Following the previous video, we'll again set up a collision function called circle overlap to house our logic, and for the time being, make it return false. We'll then call this function passing on our two circle objects and print the result to the screen, which as you can expect, is currently showing false. To actually determine if two circles are overlapping, we first need to calculate the distance between them. If the distance is shorter than the combined value of both of their radii, we can conclude that they are indeed colliding. Even though we can clearly see this is not the case at the moment, how would we tackle calculating the distance between them? This is where trigonometry comes into play, or more specifically, the Pythagorean theorem. This familiar theory states that the square of the longest side of a right angle triangle, called the hypotenuse, or the distance line in our case, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Knowing this, we can apply the same theorem to our circles and use it to calculate the distance using their x and y positions. Let's first create another function called distance to contain this calculation, keeping our code clean. This will take two points as arguments, or rather any two objects that have an x and y position property, which in our case will be our two circle objects. Inside this function, we'll first need to get the lengths of a and b. To calculate the length of a, which is the distance on the x-axis, we'll deduct circle B's X position from circle A's X position, and respectively, to get the length of B, which is the distance on the Y axis, we'll deduct circle's B Y position from circle's A Y position. And to get the length of C, which is our actual distance, we'll replicate the calculation given by the theorem. We'll do this by using the square root function, multiplying both the X and Y distances by themselves, and finally adding them together. With the distance function now available, we can now move back to the circle overlap function, and go ahead and complete it now comparing our two circle objects. We'll first need to calculate the total radii by combining their radius values. Then we'll simply use the distance function and check to see if this value is lower than that value, which we currently know it is not. Let's quickly change the circle's properties with values where we know they will be overlapping and see the result. As you can see the function returns true when the circles overlap and false when they are not. Nice! Just to prove the point, Let's now take this one step further and use this function in a complete working example, using the canvas element. I've brought this code over to a simple project, which I've set up to allow us to use our new utility functions. As these would normally be hidden away and stored to be reused when necessary, we'll do something similar here too. So before we dive in, let's quickly go over the initial code so that we're all on the same page. In this project we have a basic HTML file, used for our page structure, a main index code file that sets up our canvas and main loop but it also imports and calls the a tutorial function. And finally the example code file, which contains that exported tutorial function, where we'll be writing the bulk of our code. Notice how we're also importing a circle overlap function here too. If necessary, please go ahead and pause the video if you wish to look at any of these files. So to start, we'll first export our circle overlap function, so that we can use it within our tutorial code. Then we'll take and move the function call and our circle object definitions over to that file too, moving the call to the main tutorial function. Finally, we'll move the distance function to its own maths file, separating the collision functions from the other utility functions. Once done, we can import it back into our collisions file. This is in keeping with the clean code mindset. OK, we're now ready to start fleshing out the example code. Let's first clear the canvas on each frame using the clear rect function, so that it removes any drawing we did on the previous frame. Next, we'll move on to drawing the circles themselves. For this, we'll create a new function called drawCircle. This will take a context, a circle object, a colour and a label. 
For the labels, we'll keep it consistent and call an A and B, and give them a colour of red and blue, respectively. Let's go ahead and build this function now. We'll deconstruct the properties from the circle object for ease. To draw the circle, let's first set the line width to zero, and the fill style to the colour we passed in. We'll then begin a path, and use the canvas's arc function to draw the circle to the screen, using these new properties. And to complete the circle, we'll call the fill function. Note that the arc function can be used to draw different types of arcs, hence its name. Although we're using math.py to draw a complete 360 degree arc, which results in a circle. To draw the label, we'll first need to set up the font attributes. I'm using Arial here, with a pixel size based on the circle's radius value. I'm also using a fill colour of white, along with a baseline of middle to keep it centre aligned. And finally, we'll use the fill text function to actually draw the label to the screen, in the middle of the circle. So far, so good. Although, as our canvas has a much larger area than the original test code, let's change the circle's object somewhat to accommodate this new space. There you go, much better. OK, to visually see if we have a collision or not, we'll also add a message to the top of the screen too, showing the result of the circle overlap function. To do this, we'll first rename the result variable to has collided, to make it clearer what the value now represents. Then, under the draw circle calls, we'll add a call to a new function called draw collision message, passing on this variable. For this function, we'll again set up the context for the message using the fill text function, using a fixed font size, fill style, baseline, and finally the fill text function, passing in the collision result value. For its position, we'll center it too by dividing the canvas's width by two. As the circles are currently not overlapping, the message is correctly showing the result as false. Let's prove this still works by updating circle A's object properties so that it overlaps circle B. And there you go, it's now showing true. Nice. To show the collision more cleanly, in the main tutorial function, we'll add an alpha effect to the circles when they overlap. We'll add this to the colour argument in the draw rectangle function calls, applying a 40% alpha value when they overlap, and making them opaque when not. Changing circle A's properties now, you can see this working as intended, although instead of constantly updating the circle's properties manually, let's make this little example more interactive, by adding a few event handlers so that we can move circle A with the mouse. We'll add a new variable called mouse pressed which will fully enough keep a record if the mouse button is pressed or not. Let's set this to false initially, and move on to adding free event listeners for the mouse events. We'll use these to inspect the mouse's current state. In the mouse move event handler, we'll return early if the mouse pressed variable is false, as we only need to inspect the mouse's movement when a mouse button is pressed down. To help us with this, in the mouse down event handler, we'll set the variable to true, as we know a mouse button has been pressed down, and then do the reverse in the mouse up event handler, setting it to false as we know the mouse button has been released. Back in the mouse move event handler, if the mouse press variable is true, we'll set circle A's X and Y position to the mouse's X and Y position based on the event client's properties. We'll also want this repositioning to happen on the mouse down event too, so let's copy these two lines over to that event handler also. And with that, we should be able to see the results within the browser. When we hold the mouse button down and move it within the window, circle A is now automatically fixed to the mouse's position, following it around. Also, notice how the message updates and the circles become transparent when they successfully overlap, based on our original collision function. As we've gone this far, why don't we add the right angle triangle and distance lines for debugging purposes? I have this code already prepared, so I'll copy it over. This includes a draw triangle function, which draws the distance lines between each of the circle's positions, as you'd expect, and a draw distance message function, which displays the length in pixels. We'll call both of these new functions inside our tutorial function, passing on the required values. This may help you understand the algorithm somewhat. Pause the video if you wish to look into what's going on here. Once you do, why not play around with the code, and think about how you could use this collision within your own games. In fact, I decided to have a go myself, and extended our tutorial code to create this multicoloured ball pit. After applying some momentum to an initial circle, I used the collision function to create a random rebound and velocity reaction. As you can see, this tends to cause chaos, but can be quite mesmerising I guess. As a side note, if you support me over on Patreon, you'll receive the source code to this more complex example, along with any game projects I'm currently working on, such as the recent Street Fighter or my new Bomberman series. If not, no hard feelings. Although if you enjoyed this video, if you could click on the like button, or better still the subscribe button, that would be much appreciated. To be fair, there's much more we could do here honestly, specifically with the other types of collisions we've mentioned but that'll be something for another day in video. Thanks for watching, and out.